Good morning. It's a pleasure for us to lead worship with all of you in league today again. Last time was back in December and little did we know then that we would still rely on online worship at this time in Easter. It's such a special day that we are celebrating and I had hoped that I would be able to meet you in person, maybe even shake your hand and say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. But things are looking brighter and uh, soon we will be able to meet with close friends and family. And before we know it, we are in June, July, and we will hopefully be able to open our halls again and meet for worship. Easter Sunday is such a special day for Christians as we celebrate Jesus' victory on the cross. He died for us and he rose again from the dead so that we can have eternal life with him. And in the Salvation Army we love to celebrate by singing and we're going to sing a song now together. It's song number 229 in our songbook uh, and the words will come up on your screen. It's the song, O joyful sound, O glorious hour, with the chorus that says, He lives, he lives, I know that my Redeemer lives. So let us sing this song together. song and I really hope that you know in your heart that Jesus lives, that he gave his life for you and that nothing can take that away from you. I would like to read for you today from Luke chapter 24 verse 1 to 8 which tells us, us the story about Easter Sunday. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, 
Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered his words. It's, it's interesting, isn't it, uh, that Jesus told them so many times in different ways that he would have to die, but that he would rise again. And still the people didn't remember and they didn't understand what was happening. They didn't link up with all the th prophecies from the Old Testament that was going to be fulfilled in Jesus. But when they finally realized what a joy, when they understood that this really was the savior, savior that they had been waiting for. We're going to spend some time in prayer together and to help us to gather our thoughts we're going to sing a song at 237 from our songbook. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? Forever he will be the lamp upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship him alone. You can either sing along or just listen to the words as we lift up our prayers to God. I don't know about your personal situation or the special prayers prayer requests for the community in Leek. But, but you know, so bring this before the Lord right now as we pray together. So let us sing and pray together. Shall we pray together? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your Son. We thank you for the sacrifice that you did upon the cross so that we would have eternal life. We pray today with all the Christians around the world that are gathering to celebrate this Easter Sunday and we just lift your name up high because you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We thank you for everyone who's gathered here today with us in this meeting. You know each of, each of us by name and you know exactly what we need for today. And uh, we just thank you for being there with us. You know of those who have uh, lost close friends or relatives. You know of those who have been ill or struggling with mental health right now. And we, we just place them in your hands, Lord. And we know that you are the great healer and you know what is best for all of us. Lord, we come before you in worship because we know that you are the hope for the world 
and we pray that you will help us to bring that message out to the people that we meet. We place us all in your hands and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before JP shared the word with us today, uh, we are going to sing another song and it's the one of Charles Wesley's hymn, well-known hymns and uh, maybe for the younger generation the words seems a bit old-fashioned uh, but it's a really good song and I hope you will understand the meaning even if you don't understand all the words. Uh, it's song number 218. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. So let's sing this celebration song together. <laughs> Pilate wrote a sign and had it placed on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Good morning. What a privilege to be able to share with you God's Word this Easter Sunday morning. 
when we're going to spend some time reflecting on the events of Easter and how that can help us today. I pray that the Holy Spirit would uh, guide us and direct us in everything, that we, uh, we can listen to God's voice in spite of everything else that goes around us. We can listen to His voice and His voice alone. The songs we sang and the Bible passage about Jesus' resurrection that Corinne read earlier on, uh, and the short video depicting Jesus carrying his cross, and which concluded with the image of the tools that inflicted so much pain on our Savior. All these elements helps us to focus on what Easter means to us as followers of Christ. And, and also to the world, whether the world acknowledges it or not, Jesus is the Savior. We saw the cross, and we saw in the video, and we read about the resurrection. But I would like to take us a little bit back to the beginning of this particular journey that Jesus undertook. We can find that journey, or that account, in Luke 9, 51 to 53. I will be reading uh, from the, the Passion Translation, and then the King James Version Translation as well. So the Passion Translation reads like this. Jesus let nothing distract him from departing for Jerusalem because the time for him to be lifted up drew near and he was full of passion to complete his mission there. So he sent messengers ahead of him as envoys to a village of Samaritans. But as they approached the village, the people turned them away. They would not allow Jesus to enter, for he was on his way to worship in Jerusalem. Now, the authorized King James Version adds some other elements to this passage. It says, Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Here we have two beautiful passages. or It's the same passage but in two different translations which will help us going forward. Luke 9.51, the, 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 which, which we use in today, to Luke 9.44 is a big section of the gospel that describes Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. It starts on, 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 the, on 9.51, uh, which introduces us to, to this section. And then uh, when Jesus sets the course to Jerusalem, the place where he was going to die, and the, the witnesses would we see him resurrecting as well, as we celebrate today. But these two, these two sections have two major themes. The tension between Jesus and the religious leaders. And the second one, the need for Jesus to prepare his disciples for his death. Succession planning, if you will. So the journey starts with the Samaritans refusing to receive Jesus. There are other rejections on his way to Jerusalem. Uh, and, and this journey concludes finally with crowds welcoming Jesus into the capital city in Luke 19, 28. And Jesus weeping over the city because, as he said it, you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God in Luke 9, 44. As we celebrate Easter Sunday today uh, and have spent time reflecting on the events leading up to this day, I wanted us to focus on Jesus' determination and passion to fulfill his mission as stated in Luke 9.51. Luke 9.51 says, Jesus let nothing distract him from departing for Jerusalem. Now, it's so hard nowadays to stay focused in a world full of distractions. The world of scrolling down on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, tweet, uh, TikTok. Uh, are you TikToking? Because I, I, I'm not. But, uh, and so many other social, plat social media platforms and other sites distracting us with so much information, at times even fake information. It is said that one mark of success is willpower and determination to remain focused. Which leads us to the theme of t this message today. True greatness is marked by steadfast determination. 
And one way to, remo to remain focused is to plan well the day, for instance, and to do the most difficult things first. So research has shown us that our minds, generally speaking, are sharpest in the morning and that uh, it, uh, that is when we should tackle those tough and or unpleasant jobs uh, or tasks. And through that entire process, we also must ensure that we eliminate distractions and time wasters. Personally, I personally had to make a, dis a decision to, after a certain time in the evening, to retire and read so that I could maintain my goal of reading X numbers of books annually. It's a choice that I made, a choice between the distractions of the TV and our social media platforms and achieving my personal goal, my personal development goal and also feeding my soul. I even stop the notifications in my social media apps so that I check them when I want. I'm in control. Let's give control and not when these apps want to control my time. I don't know about you, but one of the things that drives me crazy is seeing those red circles with the number of notifications and number of unread emails and so on. I feel like I have to immediately go and deal with those. So I had to remove some of those distractions. Success comes by constantly reminding oneself of the ultimate goal. And the goal, it kind of serves as a motivator. And the true greatness is, is marked by steadfast determination. And that's been ex exemplified in Jesus, our Savior, in the reading today. When thinking about distractions, Galilee comes to mind. Not that you are, not for, for you or me, but uh, Galilee could have become Jesus' distraction from his mission. Jesus spent so much time in Galilee during his public ministry. So immediately after being baptized and spending 40 days in the wilderness, fasting and resisting the temptations of Satan, he went to Galilee. But why not stay in the southern part of, the, of, the Israel, of the Israel's political and religious capital where there were so many more people? Well, there were three reasons mainly. To fulfill the prophecy... Because in Isaiah 9, 1 and 2, it says, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. That was the first. The second one, it was to find disciples. Jesus had a plan to select and train a small group of disciples to continue his work after his death and, and ascension. He knew that he was on a divine schedule, three years of public ministry, followed by his death, resurrection and ascension. When you think about it, three years is not a long time. He knew it would be important to spend as much quality time as possible during those short three years with this group that he personally trained to continue what he had started. And the third is the, to emphasize the universal goal of the gospel. Yes, Jesus was the Messiah, King of the Jews, but he was also King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So he came not only to save his people, Israel, but all peoples. The gospel is for all, Jews and non-Jews alike. And spending time in Galilee of, of the Gentiles illustrates the universal purpose of Jesus' mission to seek and save the lost, the whomsoever. And we, we must therefore continue to do what Jesus has clearly showed in Galilee, like our Lord we must share the gospel with all creation. So, staying in Galilee could have been a much better choice if Jesus was thinking about an easier and more comfortable life in comparison to what he would be facing in Jerusalem. That could have been Jesus' distraction. But Jesus, he didn't let as we read, Jesus let nothing distract him from departing for Jerusalem. Let me ask you a couple of questions or even a bit more than, more than two questions. Uh, are you allowing 
too many distractions getting in, in your way uh, of keeping from achieving your personal spiritual goal? W what is competing for your time and robbing you, robbing you of the opportunity and the privilege to have a healthy relationship with God? What about the power of prayer in your life? Are you reading and studying and going deeper in your Bible? Jesus teaches very clearly to keep focused and shows that true greatness is marked by steadfast determination in spite of everything else. So he had a determination. And why, would, why wouldn't Jesus let anything distract him, you, you might ask? And we read that because the time for him to be lifted up drew near. Jesus knew full well the journey he was taking. He knew about the challenges uh, he would face during the journey. He knew uh, what was expecting him in Jerusalem. And he was determined to fulfill his mission with passion, whatever the cost. The authorized King James Version uh, says that he, the time had come for him, Jesus, to be received up. So Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to be received up. He would be received up to the higher elevation city of Jerusalem. Go up to the city of Jerusalem. He would be received up on the cross. And he would be received up to heaven in a glorious ascension. Jesus undertook his final journey toward Jerusalem with courageous determination to face the difficulty of the task ahead of him. In Isaiah 50 verse 7, it speaks prophetically of the Messiah, the great servant. It says, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint and I know I will not be put to shame. This is Jesus who steadfastly set his face like a flint, as Isaiah wrote, going to Jerusalem to suffer and die for our sins. There are two kinds of courage. The courage of the moment, which requires no previous thought, and the planned courage, which sees the difficulty ahead and steadfastly marches towards it. And Jesus had this kind of courage. He saw the cross on the horizon, but still steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Set his face like a flint. It refers to Jesus' boldness, courage, constancy and firmness of mind, a firm purpose. He resolved upon it. He was determined to go to Jerusalem, even though he knew what was, he was going to meet. That he should obey the Father's will to bear the sins of the world, the curse of the law, the wrath of God. He knew he had many enemies, men and devils to grapple with. He knew he would have to undergo a painful, shameful and a, a cursed death. Yet, none of those things moved him. He was determined to go to Jerusalem and planned his journey accordingly. Friends, Jesus demonstrated very clearly that true greatness is marked by steadfast determination. No doubt. No doubt about that. And he uh, he was full of passion, as we read in the second part of the verse uh, of, uh, in Luke 9.51. And he was full of passion to complete his mission there, there being Jerusalem. When we realize that Jesus was fully aware of what was expecting him in Jerusalem, not a walk in the park, that's for sure. So how could he be passionate about completing this mission there? It's something our minds cannot comprehend. It speaks of this great, great love for us, you and I. He showed us the way very clear. Life is tough 
and we will face many challenging situations which will attempt to distract us from the mission entrusted to us, from our relationship with God, but we must not let distractions get in the way of our determination to love God, love others, and impact our communities with God's transformational love. And as Jesus said, as you go, make disciples. Friends, we are called and empowered by God's grace to preach salvation in Christ, to seek sanctification or holiness through His inexhaustible power, and to live our faith unashamedly through service to the glory of God. And nothing should distract us from that. So why would Jesus want to go through all he went through? It makes no sense. He did it for us, is the short answer. Because he loves us. And listen to what Hebrews 12, 2, the second part of Hebrews 12, 2 says in the Passion Translation. Because those are beautiful words that really speak to the heart and really tells us why Jesus did. And it starts like, because... His heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be His. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation. Why would Jesus do this? Because His heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be His. And because of that, He endured the agony of the cross. Jesus let nothing distract him from departing for Jerusalem because the time for him to be lifted up drew near and he was full of passion to complete his mission there. True greatness is there. True greatness is marked by steadfast determination as we saw by the example given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So friends, Remain focused and fix your eyes on Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And may the Lord continue to bless you. And may his word continue to grow in you and through you. And may you be fruitful for the kingdom. I pray this upon you. And let's uh, together um, f uh, close this time in prayer. And then we'll listen to a song. And then I'll uh, uh, give the benediction to Let's pray together. O oh Lord, risen alive and full of grace, you paid such a price that we may live in freedom today. We worship your holy name and give thanks for your redeeming grace. Heavenly Father, may we drink in your tender love so that we can pour this love out to others. Come, Reign in our hearts, minds, and spirits. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to blow through our every word, every action, and every thought. Come transform us on the inside so that we may, we may become more and more like our risen Jesus Lord. We pray in the name of our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to listen to, to this uh, beautiful song and then uh, we'll have the, the, the benediction.
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame in love. You came and gave amazing grace. Whoa, beautiful, wor beautiful and powerful words. Word is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a beautiful time together. And now let's conclude with a benediction. May the celebration of resurrected life bring new hope to your being. May the victory over earthly death turn your eyes to the promise of heaven. May the empty tomb help you to leave your sorrows at the foot of the cross so that God's hope, promises and forgiveness reign in your life forever. Amen and Amen.